Hello everybody, today we're going to be talking about Chief Big Bear or Mr. Hey Musqua, a Cree leader of the Treaty 6 territory. He was born in 1825 in Jackfish Lake near North Balford, Saskatchewan, so just uh, north of Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. And he was the son of another chief, an Ojibwe chief by the name of Black Powder. And when he was young during his tribe, you know, he ended up getting a disease called smallpox. When he contracted this disease, he was just 12 years old, but managed to survive the disease. And after he got healthy, he spent a lot of time with his father to get mentored and learning about the ways of the Cree people and hunting and praying. And they spent a lot of time at Bull's Forehead Hills. And that's where he would do a lot of his praying and ceremonies to the spirits. And through this time, he had visions. And these visions came to him. And it kept consuming his mind of this vision of a bear. And through these visions, he ended up creating a bear necklace with uh, five claws. And he would wear this around and they would start to call him Musqua, which means bear in Cree. As he grew older, it was said that he had many wives and at least four male sons. And one of his sons was Iyimasis or Little Bear. And it was, it was, there's stories that Little Bear helped found the reservations of Montana First Nations in Alberta near Pinoca and also the Rocky Boy Reservation near Haver, Montana. So Big Bear would become a great warrior and often took his dad's warriors on missions to go fight the Blackfoot people and these missions would be known as haunting the Blackfoot. In 1864, Big Bear's dad would end up passing away when he was 40 years old, which left a lot of the, the tribe without a leader. So naturally, he would be the, the, the person uh, the, who would be the successor and he become a chief of a hundred people in his tribe. And during this time, you know, they lived off the land, they hunted the bison, and Big Bear and his people were great hunters, and the men would go and hunt these animals for food, clothing, and shelter, and it was just a way of life. There was abundance of food, of water, of shelter, and land. By 1870 to late 1800s, things started to change for Big Bear and the indigenous peoples of the land. 1870 was also the last of the Indian Wars and it was by modern day Lethbridge, Alberta area in a battle called Be the Battle of Belly River where 300 Crees ended up dying in this battle and later would set the stage for reconciliation between the Cree and the Blackfoot who have been enemies for many years. So during this time as well, 1870, Canada wanted to expand into Western Canada and make room for all the settlers to come and establish farms. And they were literally giving the land away and selling it without the consent of the indigenous people on the land. And this really infuriated a lot of the leaders um, and the indigenous leaders to be like, what the heck, they're selling all the land and they didn't even consult us. So they wanted to go see if this was true. In 1870, Hudson Bay Company and James McKay came to visit Chief Big Bear and they were giving him gifts. And McKay was a, a, a good friend of Big Bear for many of, of years and he informed Big Bear that the RCMP were around and they were in the area to help ensure the progress of Canada. And this was also a means to start the treaty conversations by giving the, the indigenous people and the Cree people and people of Treaty 6 gifts to start the conversation of treaty because they knew that treaty was a, a way to establish control of the land. So Big Bear started talking with the government in 1870 but didn't want to sign the treaty. He knew the government would break treaty after signing and he said we want none of the Queen's presence. When we set a fox trap we scatter pieces of meat all around the trap and when the fox gets into the trap we knock him on the head and we want no baits. Let your chiefs come like men and talk to us so basically he was saying that all these gifts that you're giving us we know it's basically just bait to go into the trap and after that you knock us on the head 
Also during this time, there's a lot of loss of bison. There's tuberculosis going around and decimating a lot of the indigenous people. And a lot of the people were starting to starve. And this was starting to be a huge major factor, but also another factor on how to get the treaties going and signed. Big Bear eventually signed Treaty 6 in 1882, but he resisted for as long as he could. He also resorted to, to trying to fish with his tribe and hunt gophers, but it just wasn't enough. So he felt after he signed that the other chiefs betrayed him, despite all his warnings that you know the treaties were not going to be uh, going as promised. In 1882, Chief Big Bear wanted to unite all the people, all the chiefs, all together to start one big reservation for their people. He had 2,000 tribal members meet for a Sundance at Chief Palmic Reserve and it was the largest gathering at, the, at this time with all the different chiefs and all the people all together in one place. From 1882 to 1884, he refused still on selecting uh, a reserve for his people. And from that, the government held off on giving support and rations to the tribe. So from this, his members criticized him for, for the delay. And it was at this point that his leadership started to decline. April 2nd, 1885, Wandering Spirit and Little Bad Man, who was Big Bear's son, took over leadership of the people. And they ended up raiding a church where they killed an Indian agent by the name of Thomas Truman Quinn who had denied their people food rations. When news of the incident spread, the government considered Big Bear responsible and an active participant in the Northwest Rebellion even though he had lost control of his band at that point and he was trying to maintain peace of his people and the settlers. On 13th of April 1885, Wandering Spirit and Little Bad Man and 250 of their warriors decided to take Fort Pitt. On May 28, 1885, the Canadian troops decided to attack back and his men and they had a battle at Frenchman Butte near Paradise Hill, Saskatchewan where the battle ended up being a draw and both parties kind of receded. On June 3rd, 1885, there was a last battle at Steel Narrows near Loon Lake, Saskatchewan, where they defeated the Warrior Society and it ended the Northwest Rebellion. And it was said that Big Bear was there and he was able to take a lot of his people and basically leave the situation unharmed. Chief Palmaker would later say it was because he was wearing the necklace, which was uh, the bear necklace which was said to have given him protection. He tried to maintain peace the whole time. He was sent to Stony Mountain Penitentiary near Regina, Saskatchewan. Chief Big Bear was eventually released after serving half of his sentence. He spent 1.5 years there and released due to illness. And according to Dempsey, Big Bear then traveled to Regina and he spent a month there after going back to Little Pine Reserve near North Balfour to live with his daughter. It was there where he lived out the rest of his days until January 17, 1888 when he passed away. He was buried in the Roman Catholic Cemetery on the reserve. Big Bear is remembered as a strong and powerful Cree chief and a protector of his people. He stood firm against what he considered to be unjust and inadequate terms of Treaty 6. He also tried to unite the Cree people so that they could successfully fight against socio-economic injustices as a community. Today here we remember Chief Big Bear.